What's happening, everybody? On today's show, it was a busy recruiting weekend. We'll recap all the headlines as Georgia, Alabama, Auburn, and others made some big additions. And the MLB draft was last night. Several SEC guys going off the board while LSU baseball made history. Locked on SEC starts right now. You are locked on SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And what's up, everybody? Welcome into Locked On SEC. It's great to have you guys along. I'm Chris Gordy. Thanks for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. Remember, we're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. All right, we're going to jump into it. There was plenty of recruiting news going on over the weekend. Top high school football players around the country announcing their decisions. In fact, just last week alone, there were 21 players who committed to an SEC program. So let's jump into it. Let's go around the conference. Boots out to the right. Oh. The Makes the hand off. Around the conference. And we start over at Georgia as they had a number of recruiting pickups in the last couple of days. And I know the rich get richer. They were already the number one, uh, you know, recruiting class for 2024. And now they make more additions. We start with four-star offensive tackle Nair Daniels. He is the number 11 offensive tackle, according to 24-7 Sports. Had offers from Texas and Florida State. He commits to the Georgia Bulldogs, uh, six foot eight, three hundred and seventy pounds. Also, four-star defensive lineman Joseph Jonah Ajanye. He announced uh, his commitment to Georgia. He's six foot four, two hundred and seventy-five pounds. Rated four stars, the number six defensive lineman, the number ten player from the state of Texas. Georgia also added four-star O tackle or offensive tackle Daniel Calhoun, one of the top prospects from the state of Georgia. He's the number ninety-eight overall player the number six offensive tackle in the country, and number 15 player from the state of Georgia. And lastly, over the weekend, four-star offensive lineman Marcus Easley committed to Georgia. Six foot seven, 325 pounds. Four-star prospect, number five player from the state of Illinois, number 21 offensive tackle. So depth on the O-lines and D-lines. That is where Georgia will kill you, as uh, they have been on a recruiting tail tear as of late, Easley. The fourth four-star prospect to the uh, commit to the Bulldogs in the last handful of days. And Georgia now has 26 commitments for the class of 2024, which, like we said, ranks number one in the nation on the composite ranking. Three five-star commitments, 16 four-star commitments, and seven three-stars. Absolutely ridiculous what Kirby Smart and company are doing. Meanwhile, the OG. Nick Saban over at Alabama. They had a couple of guys as well yesterday and over the weekend. Four-star corner, Sabian Brown. He committed to Alabama on Sunday afternoon. Chose the tide over the likes of USC and Ohio State. He's the number 61 overall player in the class of 2024. The number seven corner in the country. Number six player from the state of California. Six foot tall, 180 pounds. Bama also went outside of the country for uh, one of their other commitments over the weekend, Justin Okoronkwo from Germany is a linebacker, six foot three, two hundred pounds, number two player from Germany. I didn't realize we had rankings for Germany, but number eighty four linebacker, and uh, he had committed to Maryland back in November. Alabama extended him an offer, and he decommitted from Mike Locks Mike Loxley's program over the weekend and uh, committed to Bama. Now, just days ago, Alabama added four-star athlete Jameer Grimsley. He got Tide fans very excited. So that puts Alabama now at 12 commitments for the class of 2024, which ranks 20th nationally. And you know that's just going to keep moving up. But uh, Brown was Alabama's third commitment on Sunday when we talk about Zabian Brown. So they get Zabian Brown, they get Justin Okoronkwo, and they also picked up their first commitment for the class of 2026, offensive lineman Zyke Helton. But, look, we'll get to that down the road. We're uh, trying to focus mostly on just the 2024 players. Uh, over at Auburn, Hugh Freeze and company, they pick up Malik Blockton, blue-chip defensive lineman 
from Pike Road, Alabama, committed to the Auburn Tigers. He had a ton of scholarship offers, including from a lot of SEC schools. He's six foot four, 275 pounds, four star recruit, the number 24 recruit from the state of Alabama, number 43 defensive lineman. And uh, with Blockton signing with Auburn, they are up to 10 commitments. Now, they also picked up a commitment from three star linebacker D'Angelo Barber a couple of days ago. He's the number 45 linebacker in the country. So, uh, Two good pickups there for Auburn. Over at Arkansas, they picked up a wide receiver in Ashton Bethel Roman. Uh, He's Arkansas's highest rated offensive verbal commitment in this class. Comes from uh, just outside of Houston, Texas. Been trending towards Arkansas. And uh, his dad, Mark Roman, played 10 years in the NFL. Of course, uh, played his college ball at LSU. But Bethel Roman considered to be the number 124 overall prospect in the class of 2024, the number 19 wide receiver, the number 24 player out of the state of Texas. So good pick up there for Arkansas. Speaking of the state of Texas, Texas A&M, if you missed it a couple days ago, picked up a major commitment, five-star wide receiver Cameron Coleman. He is uh, considered a top three wide receiver in the entire class of 2024. He's the number 11 overall prospect, number one player out of state of Alabama, six foot three, 180 pounds, and he's committed to Texas A&M. He took an official visit there in mid-June. Josie Aggies over the likes of Alabama, Clemson, Auburn, LSU, Texas. Uh, and he is A&M's 16th commitment for the class of 2024. Also the Aggies' fourth wide receiver in that cycle. Kind of odd that they have that many uh, wide receivers with just 16 signees. But, uh, hey, congrats to them. Draylon Miller, remember, he was uh, AM's second highest recruit back in July. He will also play wide receiver. So build it up that receiv- receiving class Jimbo Fisher is. You know, over at Missouri, Eli Drinkwitz doing some work in the last week. Added a couple of commitments in recent days, starting a four-star corner, Cameron Keys. He's a... Uh, the 10th commitment of the cycle for uh, Missouri. They also picked up wide receiver James Madison. He's uh, the number 362 overall prospect, the number 56 wide receiver. And they also added Nicholas Rodriguez, a linebacker, uh, six foot one, 190 pounds, three star linebacker. So some good additions there for Eli Drinkwitz over at Kentucky. Mark Stoops getting some additions to that secondary cornerback. Terrian Nichols uh, announced his commitment to Kentucky, a four-star corner out of Cincinnati area. He's the number nine prospect from the state of Ohio, number 22 cornerback in this class. Uh, They also picked up three-star defensive back Quaysheed Scott a couple of days ago. Uh, Kentucky's got 13 commitments in this group. Well, actually, they picked up their 14th. Just yesterday, three-star wide receiver David Washington, six-foot tall, 185 pounds, considered to be the number 93 wide receiver in this class. So uh, a couple good additions there for Kentucky. Over at Tennessee, Josh Heupel picking up William Satterwhite, six-foot three, 300 pounds, rate of four-star, the number seven recruit from the state of Ohio, number 11 interior offensive lineman and number 191 prospect overall. So that puts Tennessee now at 16 commitments for the class of 2024 and uh, continuing to add to the trenches. Over at Vanderbilt, Clark Lee picked up a running back, four-star running back in Johan Cardenas. Committed to Clark Lee, had offers from Texas Tech, BYU, Missouri, and uh, he's the highest-rated recruit in Clark Lee's 2024 class, four-star commit. And Vandy now has 20 total commits, with one four-star and 19 three-stars. They did pick up uh, one yesterday. Defensive back Dante Carter announced his commitment to Vanderbilt. Six foot one, 195 pounds. Three-star prospect, the number 62 safety in the country. So some good additions there for Clark Lee and Vanderbilt. Over at Ole Miss, Lane Kiffin. They went to work adding uh, edge defender Maurice Davis out of the state of Georgia. He's a highly sought after edge defender, committed over the weekend to Ole Miss, six foot five, 210 pounds, rated three stars, the number 40 edge defender in the class of 2024. And Ole Miss did lose one 
over the weekend. Four-star quarterback, DeMond Williams. He committed to Ole Miss back in December. Uh, he's an Arizona native. Arizona's been uh, recruiting him like crazy, and uh, he decommitted from Ole Miss. So a little bit of a loss there for the Rebels. Uh, outside of recruiting, transfer portal, one of the top remaining targets in the transfer portal, Sedu Traor committed to Mississippi State on Saturday. He originally entered the transfer portal in late April, wanting to play wide receiver instead of tight end, and he is heading to Starkville to go play with Will Rogers and Mike Wright. And uh, Zach Arnett gets one of the top targets in the transfer portal. Sedu Traor going to Starkville. He played last season at Arkansas State before joining Colorado. Uh, had 50 catches for 655 yards and four touchdowns. He will have to submit a waiver, though, if he wants to play immediately, as he has now transferred twice without graduating. So we'll see what happens there. One more uh, note here on a future SEC school, Texas. They are the favorite to win the Big 12 championship this season. They were ranked number one in the Big 12's preseason media poll which uh, came out just a couple days ago. They beat out Kansas State and Oklahoma for the top spot. Texas with 41 first-place votes. Kansas State was second with 14. So Texas loaded with talent. We know Quinn Ewers is back as uh, their starting quarterback. They landed five players on the preseason, all Big 12 team. And by the way, we know where they go week two. They will be heading to Tuscaloosa to play Alabama. So a big, tough early season test for Nick Saban's crew as the Longhorns of Texas, Steve Sarkeesian, coming in there and picked as the favorite to win the Big 12. All right, there you have it. That's the latest going on in uh, recruiting news and all that. Thank you guys for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. Coming up next, we're going to touch on some of the big names to uh, get their name called Sunday night in the MLB draft from the SEC. Thank you guys again for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. And we want to remind you this episode is presented to you by our friends over at Bird Dogs. Look, Bird Dogs doing their job, doing their part, making you look good and feel good. Their shorts do the exact same thing as Lululemon, but they fit way better. Like if you're sick of shorts that are too restrictive with that cotton and, you know, you can't stretch in them and all that kind of stuff. Bird Dogs, they have fixed that issue. They've got that cloud knit fabric. It looks just like khaki, but it stretches so you get that way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. Of course, in these summer months where it's hot as the devil, Bird Dogs, they use that anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. So go check out our friends over at birddogs.com slash college. Make sure you enter our promo code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE. That is going to get you the free Yeti-style tumbler with your order. Again, that's locked on college, uh, or locked on, It's uh, birddogs.com slash college. Get that free Yeti style tumbler. And I promise you, you're not going to want to take your bird dogs off. You're going to love them. And they're going to help you get through these summer months into tailgating season at the start of the football season. Uh, Birddogs.com slash locked on college. All right, rolling along here, Locked On SEC. Thank you guys for making us your first listen every day. Shout out to our everydayers. Uh, check us out tomorrow and throughout the week. We're going to continue our preview series, catching up with some of our buddies, uh, previewing some more of the SEC schools heading into the 2023 season. We're going to do LSU. We'll do Ole Miss. All that coming your way later this week. But as we dive back into it, the uh, MLB draft was Sunday night, at least the first couple of rounds. And LSU making a little bit of history as we jump into it. Uh, first off, it was Paul Skeens, LSU pitcher, going number one overall to the Pittsburgh Pirates. He was the best arm in college baseball last year. He was expected to go at least top three, transferred in from Air Force, won SEC Pitcher of the Year, won the national championship, won the uh, Dick Hauser Trophy, the 2023 National Player of the Year from D1 Baseball, Collegiate Baseball. Uh, National Pitcher of the Year, just about every uh, publication out there. Was a first-team All-American, first-team All-SEC, blah, 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 blah. College World Series most under, uh, outstanding player. He 
is the second number one overall pick in LSU's program history in baseball. Uh, ben McDonald being the first, who now does uh, analyst work for the SEC Network and ESPN. So Paul Skeens from LSU goes number one overall. Going number two overall, his teammate, Dylan Cruz, goes to the Washington Nationals. The uh, LSU star outfielder was the uh, he won the Golden Spikes Award and um, look played since day one coming into LSU has been a stud a stalwart for them the last three years uh, was named the SEC player of the year in 2023 first team All-American uh, also cracked the SEC defensive team the gold glove team he batted 426 this year with 18 home runs uh, scored a uh, 100 runs, drove in 70. So uh, Paul Skeens and Dylan Cruz become the first teammate duo to go number one and number two in an MLB draft in the sports history. So no teammates have ever gone one and two in the Major League Baseball draft until now. So congrats to Paul Skeens and Dylan Cruz. Now a few other notes here. Uh, The 2023 number one picks in the NFL, WNBA, and Major League Baseball all came from the SEC. You had Bryce Young in the NFL. You had Paul Skeens in the MLB. And you had Aaliyah Boston in the WNBA. Now, our buddy Chris Marler points out that SEC players in the professional drafts, he pointed out Brandon Miller went number two overall in the NBA draft. The guy who went number one, Victor Wembanyama, Victor Wembanyama did not play college ball. So the first collegiate player in every pro sport draft this year, came from the SEC. Again, Bryce Young, NFL, number one, Brandon Miller, number two, NBA, Paul Skeens, number one, MLB, and Aaliyah Boston, number one in the WNBA. So pretty cool stuff there. Now, a few other guys heard their names called on Sunday night as well. Wyatt Langford from Florida. He was selected number four overall for the Texas Rangers. And got to think he's going to climb up through her farm system pretty quickly. He was predicted by some to go number one overall uh, because they thought the thought was maybe the asking price for Dylan Cruz and Paul Skeens could be a little bit higher than Wired Langford. MLB's weird with that, you know, depending on who your agent is, uh, what the asking price is, signing bonus, and all that kind of stuff. But Langford had a fantastic season, finished with a slugging percentage of 784, 21 home runs, 88 hits. Uh, second highest slugging percentage in the SEC this past year behind Georgia's Charlie Condon. So Wyatt Langford, congrats to him. Now the top four picks of the Major League Baseball draft, uh, number one was an SEC player, number two was an SEC player, number three was an SEC commit, and Max Clark, who went third, he was a Vanderbilt commit, and number four overall was Wyatt Langford. So uh, pretty cool there. Now Chase Dolander, he went to the Colorado Rockies in the first round, a former Tennessee Vols ace had a uh, couple really good years with Tennessee after transferring from Georgia Southern and uh, was part of that historic Vols team a year ago that was just outstanding with the program high 57 wins and still had a really good year this year. Not as good as 2022 season, but finished his career with the Vols, the 364 ERA, 17 wins, 228 strikeouts, very impressive stuff from him. And then also going middle of the first, uh, 15th overall, it was Jacob Gonzalez from Ole Miss, the shortstop. He uh, won National Freshman of the Year honors in 2021 on that uh, Ole Miss team that made its run to the College World Series title. Numbers slipped a little bit after that breakout year, but uh, a lot of people like uh, his ability, and so congrats to Jacob Gonzalez going 15th overall to the Chicago White Sox out of Ole Miss. And, of course, we'll hear more SEC names called throughout the day today with the resumption of the MLB draft, and uh, we'll get you, get you caught up to date on any notable guys hearing their names called. But um, pretty cool stuff, pretty cool stuff with all those guys getting drafted very high out of the SEC. Thank you guys for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. Coming up next, we're going to talk about the SEC Male and Female Athlete of the Year Awards coming out. That's coming your way in just a sec.
going along here, Locked On SEC, and as we continue on here, we want to hit on a couple of people getting uh, some unique recognition as the SEC Male and Female Athlete of the Year Awards came out just a couple of days ago. We didn't get a chance to touch on it, so figured we would dive into that here, and we start with Dylan Cruz, of course, we just mentioned, went number two overall in the Major League Baseball draft. Rewarded for his efforts from a fantastic 2023 season, he was announced as the SEC Male Athlete of the Year. Again, was part of LSU's national title uh, lineup, batted 426, drove in 70, 18 home runs as LSU won their national title against Florida. Cruz made a solid case for the award after uh, this season, led the SEC in batting average, run scored, on-base percentage, hits, and walks. And like we talked about, a Golden Spikes winner, a first-team All-SEC, All-Defensive SEC team, consensus first-team All-American, and just uh, an incredible year for Dylan Cruz. Now on the other side, Trinity Thomas, she added to her impressive resume, winning the SEC Female Athlete of the Year Award. Uh, she's the first Florida athlete to win the award since Grant Holloway won it in 2019 for track and field. Uh, she took to social media saying, wow, being named the SEC Female Athlete of the Year is an honor. SEC is a powerhouse conference of athletics. So to be even amongst the, the names uh, on this list, absolutely unbelievable. Just want to thank my teammates, coaches, everyone supported me in Gator Nation. Uh, last year's winners were Bryce Young of Alabama and South Carolina's Aaliyah Boston. So, good company to be in. Trinity Thomas, she led the nation in perfect tens in gymnastics for third consecutive year with eight. Both she and Cruz uh, winning the uh, Athletes of the Year. Roy F. Kramer, SEC Athletes of the Year. So, congrats to them. Tremendous, uh, tremendous achievements for both of them. Uh, a few other SEC notes as we roll along here. Uh, Vanderbilt extended the contract of Athletic Director Candace Story Lee on Friday. Uh, she's been the Commodore's full-time AD for three years now. Uh, her ex extension will reportedly be for five years starting on July 1st. And uh, she released a statement saying, grateful to the Chancellor for partnership, commitment to our shared vision for what Vanderbilt Athletics is. And uh, again, well-deserved for her and... Uh, some great stuff on the horizon for the uh, Van Vanderbilt Athletics as they'll continue to build their, uh, add more to their facilities and whatnot. So uh, good for Vanderbilt. A uh, quick SEC hoops nugget. Kentucky men's basketball announced the hiring of a new assistant coach on Jan John Calipari's staff. The Wildcats added a familiar face in Chuck Martin. Uh, he was actually an assistant under Cal back at Memphis, and now he's teaming back up with Calipari over at Kentucky. Uh, Alabama basketball, they picked up a piece in the transfer portal, a pledge from West Virginia transfer Muhammad Wag, 6'10", and will bring some length, defensive vers versatility to Alabama's front court next season, so a good addition there. And then a few SEC baseball transfers. Uh, Texas A&M landing third baseman out of the transfer portal in Charlie Pagliarini uh, announced his transfer from Fairfield to Texas A&M on his Instagram account. few other SEC transfer notes. Uh, Tennessee baseball adding to the middle of their order, picking up Wofford transfer Ryan Galaney a couple of days ago. He was the SoCon player of the year in 2023. And uh, Tony Vitello also picking up a commitment of All-American infielder Billy Amick from Clemson. So some good additions there. That is going to do it for this edition of Locked On SEC. I will talk to you guys tomorrow right here on Locked On SEC.